Well, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and congratulations on the release of this wonderful, if, if challenging, film. Um, so maybe for people who aren't already familiar, you could start by giving a brief introduction to what Body of Water is all about. Um, so Body of Water follows the story of um, my character, um, the character that I play, Stephanie, and uh, we meet her when she's just um, coming out of a, <clears throat> a clinic um, for another round of treatment for um, chronic anorexia. Um, and I suppose it follows her path of um, reintroducing herself into the world that she lived in and also reconnecting with her family. Um, so we see her um, trying to build relations with her mother and her daughter, um, her teenage daughter. So, yeah. And it is a sensitive, if not quite taboo topic I think you know eating yeah. disorders anorexia so what was it about the project that made you want to be involved um I think when the script came to me um it was I think with everything I'm always very driven by oh what draws me is uh, the story essentially and the character and I think in Lucy's writing I was really intrigued about the fact that you know, a lot of the time these, um, this particular mental illness is portrayed as um, something that sort of um, is a teenage disease illness and, and that, you know, it, you pass through it and it's just something that you, you in your 20s or whatever, um, you sort of come out the other side. And what really intrigued me about this woman was that she was in her late 30s. She had a child. She had... I mean, she was a wall photographer, um, which I found really interesting how all these ingredients came together and came, you know, built, I think, quite a complex character. Um, so, yeah, so it was that, essentially. And then also Lucy's writing. Um, you know, she, it's her first feature film. And I think a lot of the time when I've read, you know, scripts by writers in their early stages, sometimes it can be overwritten and the dialogue is, you know, um, the characters overshare a lot of stuff. And what I really loved about this was that it was quite minimal in what this character shared. And, and in a way, it, it actually um, helps in terms of trying to portray what this illness, how this illness affects people, you know, it sort of isolates or, um, yeah, it's quite a lonely um, place to be, I think. Mm. Like you say, like the characters have really, it's, it's unexpected in, in lots of respects. You know, like you say, normally you associate this illness with, yeah, maybe young teenagers and the fact that mm. she has like, you know, had this successful career. Um, mm. so, you know, how did you see the character? She's also not flawless. You know, it's not just seeing her as suffering from this issue. We also see yeah. the impact it's having on her family. So, you know, how did you see the character and how did you kind of prepare to play her? I suppose what I loved about it was that, again, with Lucy's writing, she, no stage tells you what to think about this, how to think about this illness. I think she, all of them are flawed characters. And what I loved about it also was the fact that it shows how this illness her, the ripple effect of this illness through a family, um, you know, and, and, and how it, it, it sort of interferes with the relationships, the mother-daughter relationship, both with her mother and also her sense of being able to be a mother to her child. Um, but in terms of seeing the character, um, yeah, I mean, it's, all, it's all, all from the script, really. You just draw out little nuggets from the script. Um, but I was quite um, keen to, obviously because it was a transformation physically, mm. um, and I also was quite keen to make her, you know, just in every way, very different from me. Um, and 
I thought she had a sense of her being quite masculine as well in terms of who she was and the whole, you know, that she was a war photographer and it is quite a masculine world, um, quite a stressful, you know, a job to hold. And so I felt that that would feed into it. And again, she's not some bird, some frail bird. Mm type you know character I quite liked that that she is quite um she's very strong actually um and th that clashes I suppose with her feelings about herself or whatever um but in terms of preparing for the role it was it was it was it was a com it was a big commitment um I mean when I read the script and I've shared it with Lucy I, when the script was sent to me I, I was quite nervous about reading it because I suppose I knew that if I really liked this um, or it, 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 um, it connected with me in terms of wanting to do it, that I knew what would entail in terms of the physical changes that I would have to go through. Um, so it was, it was a very um, considered decision to do it um, because I was very adamant that if this story had to you know if we if we were telling this story then by no way should anyone make themselves ill or you know put themselves at risk in order to tell it yeah because just yeah like you said the physical transformation itself but did you also have to do a lot of research to kind of because I, what i love about the film is it picks up on so many of the little nuances you know mm -hmm. of you know, not just when she sat down to eat but also when she's in the supermarket and you know hearing the thing about the diet program all those tiny moments that obviously are, are so challenging for people suffering from this from this disease that you know other people would have no clue about so did you have to kind of do lots of research to understand all that yeah i mean i have to say you know a lot of it was in the script because lucy was you know um, very adamant that she wanted to sort of she her research was so extensive to be able to pick up all these little points um, and feed them into the film and so a lot of it was in the script but in terms of me uh, and my research I always will especially with something like this I think especially it when you're portraying someone who is struggling with this illness it's sort of essential for you to be able to understand it so that you can try and play it as honestly as possible um, so yeah, I did. I I I sort of um, researched, read up on it, and spoke to psychologists about <clears throat> what the treatment would be, um, or what would be available, um, and documentaries, and and also, I suppose it's just part of my process with every character. I always um, I will delve into that person and try to make them as 3D as possible. So I will go back and backstory and everything. Um, and, and, and that's what I love about the job that I do is that with every job, it sort of throws you into a different environment and you just have to rummage around for all the little jewels and nuggets and, and put them in your backpack and, and hope that it, they all feed into how you play it. Mm. And in terms of the physical transformation, you know, how long a period did you have to kind of prepare over? Because it is quite stark, I think, in the film. I mean, I don't know how much of that is kind of also with some added clever camera tricks, but, you know, it is quite um, extreme, what it seems that, uh, the, the, that you have to go to, that makes you have to go to. Yeah, it was, um, so it was over about three months. We wanted to do it, as I say, when I accepted the job, we all talked about the fact that, you know, we didn't want to, to, to put anybody at risk. And so um, with the help of a nutritionist and a trainer um, and just uh, being very open about the whole process, we were able to do it very gradually. Um, it was done with thick, you know, a lot of exercise and strict regime and everything. And so it was three months that it, it took to sort of lose the weight. And, and I think it was about two stone in the end. Um, and uh, but also, you know, we did, we did, because we did make use of camera angles or uh, side bits of makeup to be able to do it, because I think, you know, nobody wanted for, for me to get to a point where it was detrimental. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, um, it, that was what I mean by it, it had to be a considered decision in order to do this. Um, you have to be very conscious of, of, of what you're trying to the story you're trying to tell and, 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 and honour it as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, 
being sensible. And was it quite eye-opening for you? I mean, I don't know if you had people you knew. I mean, I, I think this issue is one that's way more widespread than people realise. I think sort of like just thinking of the women in my life and, you know, there's kind of a spectrum out there of people, you know, have obviously suffered um, more severely and other people who perhaps just have quite unhealthy relationships with food. And was it quite eye-opening for you to realise um, just how damaging this problem can be, kind of delving into it? Yeah, it was really. And also, I suppose, the more... I remember when we were, talk, when we were filming it, I'd be telling people about the projects that I was working on and stuff. And it was incredible how many people would come forward and share either a story of, about themselves or a story of a loved one or somebody that they knew. And I think the film itself, it, um, it was, you know, it's a low budget British independent film. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, come to it um, and really had to commit themselves, you know, in cast and crew. Um, it, and a lot of people were doing it because of something that they had either witnessed or gone through themselves. So they were giving themselves over to this. Um, because I think they themselves were really um, conscious of trying to, to, to share this story. Um, but yeah, I do, I do think it's a lot more widespread. It's interesting because I think, was it last week, um, uh, there was the cricketer Freddie Flint, uh, Flintoff, who oh, was yeah. a documentary, he, he was sharing about his bulimia. And, and it's sort of all these people, you know, in whatever position, I think you, we all... We all assume that it's sort of only a certain demographic, whereas actually it's it's hidden within so many different people's lives, um, and that's what I think is you know is it, it, is it's such a complex mental illness to understand. Mm. And one of the things I do love about the film is that it doesn't just solely focus on her eating disorder, but like we were mentioning, it's so much more as well about the relationships between all these different women and looking at women through different generations and sort of pulling out all the pressures actually that are on women to have a career and be a mother and look good. And, you know, it, it makes you realize there's not many films that are sort of solely dedicated to that, or, you know, sort of more traditionally, you know, sort of mothers and, you know, female characters yeah, more on absolutely. the sidelines in the background, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, and that's why I loved it as well. When I read it, was just this, these, these intergenerational relationships, you know, three generations of one family. You don't really get to see, as you say, you don't really get to see films where it explores that. And I thought what Lucy had grasped fantastically in her writing was the sadness and the, you know, between these women that actually, they genuinely need each other and want each other and yet trying to tread the path of, of being what the other one needs or trying to um, assess what they think the other person wants is such a complex one, especially when you add in this mental illness. Mm. And, and I think a lot of the time, you know, that thing between the mother and the daughter, between Stephanie and Amanda Burton's character, it's like treading on eggshells, really. Um, and actually, when you, they desperately just want each other, but trying to navigate themselves towards each other is so hard. And the same with the daughter. As you say, it's like at each stage of a woman's life, like with the teenager, she's having to navigate, you know, friendship, social media, boys, all of that, and how she feels about herself coming of age. Um, and, then, and then the motherly responsibility that Stephanie craves but can't quite get there. <laughs> And so what do you hope, you know, the impact of a film like this might be? Because, you know, it can be a challenging watch, but there's a lot in there as well, like we say, about, you know, uh, pulling out these female relationships. Do you hope that it will sort of start a dialogue, you know, that we kind of break some of the taboos around talking about um, mental illness and eating disorders, but and also understanding that, you know, it's not just the stereotypes, not the stereotypical demographic that's affected by this? Yeah, I think that's it. I think you've got it in a nutshell. I think we do. I do. I, I hope, as you say, this opens up a dialogue for people to be able to talk about it. And um, and also to understand how complex it is and that it takes diff many different shapes 
you know it affects people in so many different ways um and that mental illness is something that people hide behind in their own homes and whatever and actually actually if you talk about it more and it's it, it, it's more open in society i think then uh, we're able to tackle it more so yeah i do hope you know this film this meets somebody who's been struggling with this this illness for 20 years and um and it's about treatment and finding the right treatment and understanding it um and i think there's still a lot to be understood about it mm. the other thing that i was thinking about is whether the film would actually be received quite different as well with the pandemic and lockdown and i was thinking of those you know those aspects of loneliness that stephanie is kind of suffering from and then people who are having issues whether that's been really exacerbated by kind of people being by themselves not having their support groups maybe not having their family around and i thought you know maybe it could sort of touch on things that are even more relevant um kind of in that context yeah i think so it's funny i was listening to a phone in show during the pandemic about people who you know um suffering with various problems and just saying how difficult it'd been and how isolated they felt and people who actually had were totally fine, sociable, whatever, whatever, and 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 the pandemic has brought on feelings of anxiety or loneliness or whatever. So, I mean, I do think this is more um, prominent as a film. You know, I think it will reach out to people, and also I think, I think I'm hoping that um, more people will see it as well. At the moment, I think cinemas in you know, quite a, a, a sad place at this time. And, and, and I'm hoping that, especially, I think it's so hard for British independent films. I mean, it's hard for blockbusters. If it's hard for blockbusters, British independent films really need the support. And so I'm just hoping that people will go out and see it. Yeah. Or watch it from their own home. And can you tell me what you might be working on next? I mean, has things been put on hold kind of because of the pandemic or mm -hmm. you got stuff in the pipeline? I'm actually filming, I'm back at work now, which oh. has been just such a blessing to be able to yeah. get back. I've been so craving just some normality and, and I'm filming at the moment for, um, it's an, a series for Apple TV. We did one um, last year and it came out in March and now we're doing a second series. Um, so yeah, it's great to be back. Yeah, amazing. Um, well thank you so much for sharing all that with me and best of luck with the release and you know I, I hope that it has the impact you know people do get out into cinemas or see it from home um, so best of luck with it all thanks so much